This video is to answer a question from Simon Richard. Uh, asked me this question about six hours ago while I was working, and I told him maybe tonight when I get home I'll answer his question. And Richard's uh, question was, Hey man, I just got my 550, and I cannot figure out how to change the digital readout on the top of the display. A different pressure gauge, the uh, uh, display... A different pressure I guess he meant on the gauge I'm stuck with a negative 10 and 24 psi on both digital analog readouts if you could help me out that would be great well since this is a new gauge to me too Richard I had the exact same problem out of the box and it's not a problem it's just a calibration and so what we have here is I'm zero zero now but that's not what I had I had 8 psi and I had like 1.5 psi on the other side and so without going into the manual or downloading it yet I decided to see if I could figure out like any other manufacturers gauge everybody has a calibration bottle so here's the field piece and right here is zero pressure right there and you press and hold that and when you have different pressure it'll calibrate to atmosphere so looking on here we have our refrigerants we can select different refrigerants okay I'm on 134 let's uh, get it back here so if you have P equals 0 I'm going P equals 0 does that mean pressure equals 0 as in zeroing out the pressure to atmosphere so let me try and hold that and see what happens. And so I push down on this button, zero to pressure. You see that again? I'll do that again, I'll hold it. Hold, whoops, hold to zero pressure. And when I performed that task, both gauges went to zero and stayed there. I hope this is what you meant uh, because I did have a similar circumstance when I opened these gauges fresh out of the box and that took care of that problem so i finished all my vacuum tests we're not going to go on from there you've seen all my other videos about performing vacuum decay tests and why using rubber hoses is not a good idea i now downloaded the app not only on my phones but i just downloaded the app onto my android tablet and as you can see it represents what is on my gauges is on my android and so I also have both the temperature meters hooked up and you see they both say 64 degrees and and when you buy these gauges uh, when you buy these gauges depending on which order you order what level kit you order the kit I got came with two temperature clamp two temperature clamp on gauges it came with the testo case so you got the testo case on the order that I got and it also came with the vacuum uh, meter too, the micron meter so that was with this case and it came with batteries so let's go to pressure here uh, I have that open let's close that because we don't want no pressure going down and blowing um, oil all over the place if I put pressure in it and unfortunately I have a nitrogen tank at one job site I loaned out another nitrogen tank to a mechanic I know who needed it to uh, perform some nitrogen pressure decay tests on some jobs I'm going to do. And uh, my other one's back at my shop. So I'm going to use a little 134 here. So we're already set up for 134 and let's see how the pressure's changed. And let's get it on to, let's see if I could do this without dropping anything. stay up and zero in we could see both of them out let me open some pressure and uh, just notice my other gauge is down here so I will shut that off so we can watch the high and low side go up if I didn't close my gauge up there we go and we just went up we are at 65.4 psi and it changed here and it changed here and so you could guess what the temperature is in my uh, little workroom here because if this is r134 
and it's 65.4 degrees you use your PT chart and you know exactly what temperature it is actually that was out in my car not in my room here it would be roughly 68 69 psi yeah uh, in my room for my temperature right now actually when the hell did the gauges say 64? I thought it was 70 in here. It's not. It's 64 degrees in this room because those gauges have been sitting in this room overnight. So it's 64.5 or 7 degrees. As you can see by my temperature to gauges that are sitting down in the box behind me because those did not come out of my car. Well, actually, yeah, the bottle came out of my car. The gauges were inside here. So this, if you went to the PT chart, would not line up correctly because the bottle is colder than this room. And uh, so this is pure R134, so it should match up and it doesn't. So there's your pressures and that's about it. I can't do a pressure decay test with refrigerant. None of the HVAC guys are supposed to answer this question, but you automotive guys. Um, why can I not do a pressure decay test with refrigerant? Can you answer me that? I have the hoses filled up and the manifold filled up with refrigerant. I'm at 65 PSI right now and it's roughly 10 something at night so if I woke up in the morning and it came down here and I found out it was 60 PSI on um, the gauges would that mean I have a leak this is a question I'm not giving you the answer so if it's say new it's lunchtime and uh, you're an automotive mechanic and you go I'm going to do a pressure test on the air conditioning system on my 1990 Chevy Camaro and so you have the tank upright like this and you pump in and it's 12 noon and it's about you know say 80 degrees and you pump in say 83 psi of refrigerant in and then you go you go home or you are home because the car's in your garage and it's on the weekend and you figure okay it's been several hours it's I past dinner I just ate dinner it's 8 30 p.m. at night now and you go out to your car and it's no longer 83 psi but now it's 60 psi does that mean you have a leak think about it it was noontime, about 80 degrees, and now you finish dinner. It's about 8.30 p.m., and it's about 60 degrees. I'm giving you a lot of hints here. And your pressure is somewhere close to 60 PSI. So what happened was your car cooled off from 80 degrees, and the vapor gas that was in your car went to 60 degrees because it got cold at night, and your gas contracted. And as your grass gas contracted, the pressure went down. As the temperature of the gas went down, the pressure went down. So you didn't lose any refrigerant unless you really had a leak. It just contracted. It just shrank. And so the pressure went down with the temperature. This is why unless you have a real big leak and you can use soap bubbles and find a leak or a sniffer, if you try to use pressure alone in a sealed system, it will always go up and down depending on the temperature. This is why you do not use pressure of refrigerant to look, look for a leak. You use pressure of dry, something like dry nitrogen. Not shop air that's filled with moisture, dry nitrogen. It's, this is the way it was done when my dad was young. And the old man who taught my dad, taught my dad with dry nitrogen. Or they used the argon too, that was another thing. Another good dry gas. And uh, it doesn't move much with temperature. There's a little bit of movement with nitrogen, but not drastic like refrigerants. And definitely do not use compressed oxygen in a refrigeration system. If you want to stick a dynamite going off, do not use 
compressed oxygen. Just because you want to compress gas, you only put refrigerant is the only thing that should go into a air conditioning system or something that is semi inert like dry nitrogen. Argon is more inert, but uh, nitrogen is readily available and cheap. And so you could do your pressure testing with that. So that's about it. I basically wanted to answer Richard's question about his gauges being stuck on two pressures. They wouldn't be zero zero and that would be pressing does auto zero. I wonder if the auto zero works on a high pressure. I don't think I don't think they would let you do that, but let's see. Let's auto zero with 65 psi in there. No, I didn't think it would. And I just noticed too, it's, it has a digital like a uh, the dots on it are all faded out in a light gray and it knows that you have a high pressure and you're trying to see it. So that's their way of not letting you auto zero at higher pressures like this. But um, yeah, that was it. Good enough for tonight. See you guys.